there guys, what's going on? So, it's Wednesday at the time of this recording, and I wanted to be able to fit in at least a couple of videos before I go on a little bit of a temporary hiatus because of some busy stuff coming up. So, I wanted to get in a couple of things. And first off, was something that I was starting to compose a couple of weeks ago. I had had a couple of singles, some new songs that were out there in the bloodstream, out there in the world, that I wanted to talk about and put together. And most of the time, when you see me do reviews or I talk about music stuff, 9 times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10 even, I'm always very, very positive. And that's not so much because... You know, I'm just some kind of a fluff ball, or I just, you know, I easily like everything. It's just that I know what I like, and the things that inspire me are going to be the things that you're going to see me cover here more often than not. And it's rare that I really get negative. It's not something that I enjoy, but every so often, when it comes down to a certain band or artist that I like, or that I'm familiar with, and maybe they do something that... I'm not quite so enthusiastic about or maybe it just isn't working for me, that's the time where I might get inspired to say, hey, I like these guys, I like the stuff maybe they've done in the past, some of the stuff they've done more recently, but this thing isn't really working out for me. But everybody's opinion is different and you know, I feel all music is subjective, of course, everything will vary in that regard and I'm sure a certain number of people will disagree. But I want to be able to include a certain band that I'm going to mention here in this little segment today because they were big for me back uh, back in 2012 when I was doing uh, some videos then that did really well and I want to talk about them again today. But to skip the introing here and kind of dabbling around, this is a little segment I want to call uh, Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down. The rules involved are very simple and uh, you just rewind the tape a little if you don't keep up but otherwise very simple to follow. Basically I'm going to talk about either a single, just a couple different bands, uh, bands or artists, three in, in this case, and like if they've got a single out or they've got a couple of songs out there, something they've done to pique my interest is out there and I they're like a, a favorite or somebody notable to me, uh, or in one case they're even very new to me, and I want to spotlight them real quick and give some of my thoughts on each one. So that's the rules, basically, and today we're going to lead off with a thumbs up for Bob Mould for the song Hey Mr. Gray from his uh, upcoming June 3rd album, Beauty and Ruin, which, of course, I am super, super excited about. Uh, his last record, Silver Age, was not only a big success for me covering it in 2012, but it became one of my favorite kind of punk rock, kind of heavier sounding records from a guy who, if you follow enough of my reviews and the stuff that I put up on YouTube, you know, I kind of look like the indie hipster snob half the time, but I do branch out into unusual things. And when it comes to Bob, I'm not a punk, big punk rock guy or big, you know, loud rock guy by reputation, but there's that blending of hard rock or harder rock kind of that, that kind of just intensity, that pulse pounding intensity with a great melody or great sense of lyricism buried under the surface or a great kind of a gruff, sharp voice that can just kind of take you through a song. And Bob has really been that so ever since I discovered Silver Age, going back through his solo work to some of Husker Du, a great uh, Bob Mould band live album, uh, the live at uh, ETP Fest uh, record from 08, I believe it is. Fantastic little live album. And he's got a new one coming out this year, so I wanted to talk about Hey Mr. Gray. Definite big thumbs up for that one because nothing overly crazy overly like it's you know inch like compared to the stuff I'm going to talk about like in, in this in the next part or the part after it's very much to the point it rocks out it has uh, sort of a uh, definitely a, a continuation to Silver Age kind of a sound with definitely some Husker Du elements it's not a long song but it, it pounds it's it's got a, a heavy rhythm to it it rocks and it's fantastic to listen to and you immediately just want to pick it right up and listen to it all over again. It sounds like, if anything, Bob's follow-up to Silver Age is going to be uh, even better. So definitely keep an eye out for Beauty and Ruin and go listen to Hey Mr. Gray. You can pre-order that over on Merge or you can go listen to it on SoundCloud or probably YouTube by now. whole bunch of different places you can check that out at. 
Uh, keep an eye on it. It's going to be a great, great rock, rock record. So excited about that. Next here, I want to give another thumbs up to, and this is not singling anybody out. These are just the three best of stuff that made me have thoughts that I wanted to, you know, put in this video. Thumbs up to Damon Alburn with the upcoming Everyday Robots album, which so far has had the title track out, has had a Lonely Press Play out, has had Heavy Seas of Love out, and has had Mr. Tembo out, to my knowledge. So far, four songs of the total ten, I think. And really... Of new people, I'm really, like, new people to me, I'm really impressed with this Damon Albarn record. I'm really excited about it. I knew of Damon a little bit from being the, the guy who was behind the band, the goril band Gorillaz, uh, behind uh, Blur. Really not too familiar with either one outside of the Gorillaz songs, Clint Eastwood and Feel Good Inc. But I knew of him from that, and once I got to listen to this new record of his, I'm really impressed with it. It's got so many cool elements to it, like, it, it has a technology bent, sort of, like with Everyday Robots, you know, where, where Everyday Robots on our phones in the process of, you know, being sold or whatever, whatever it is. And, you know, it, it has that kind of look down on, you know, technology as a detriment, which is a subject that has been, you know, covered before in our, you know, humanities disconnect and, and that sort of thing. But it's it's very fresh. It doesn't come off as, like... I don't know, radio headlight or something like that to just drag more Englishmen into the conversation. And it's got, you know, some sampling, some really nice grooves and rhythms, especially with uh, Everyday Robots and Lonely Press Play. Stuff that just, like, some, uh, some great string work. Some things that really piqued my interest and captured my attention right away out of that. And uh, Mr. Tambo has a great ukulele sound written about... Uh, and uh, a little baby elephant that uh, Damon met on on some African uh, wilderness preserve or something like that. I actually just read the story a few minutes ago. And just really just a fresh sound and really just keeps drawing me in great melodies. Uh, Brian Eno sings uh, parts. They kind of duet it a little bit. Damon kind of handles the choruses of uh, Heavy Seas of Love. Really impressed with that record, of uh, the sound of this record so far. Obviously, the whole, the rest of the tracks haven't come out yet, uh, but I would kind of fingers crossed like it to leak a little bit because uh, I would really love to uh, to hear that, and that's something I would really love to try to review. So definitely some big thumbs way way up for Damon Alburn with uh, Everyday Robots. Go check those tracks out. And lastly, again, as I tried to say there before, not singling anybody out here. This is just the nature of this feature. Thumbs down this week to the Black Keys with their announcement for Turn Blue. I'm not going to come right out and be one of those purists, you know, who's like, oh, I loved their early work, but, you know, where did they go wrong, all this stuff, you know, over time. I do love their dirty blues sounds of their early records, you know, Thick Freakness, the big come up, their, you know, their debut work. Really, I really like that stuff. That, you know, was a, a great starting point to listen to with them and that's stuff that still when it comes up from time to time it's just as fun to listen to and the whole process all the way up through I, I like Brothers a lot uh, even El Camino which I covered to great success on my prior This Dog Ate My Vlogs channel was really something that I enjoyed the Little Black Submarines uh, Lonely Boy was a great single for that you know a lot of stuff that I really uh, enjoyed about them but one of the criticisms that has always uh, very much been levied at the duo at uh, Pat Carney and Dan Arbach from uh, Akron, Ohio, is that a lot of their work kind of has this copy-pasted feel of, well, this is kind of the same as this, or this one is the same as that, and, you know, this has got a nice groove to it, but it sounds like that groove and that groove. And, you know, I just, I always felt that their songs were very memorable and you know even if there was sort of a similarity there they just they had a lot of great memorable fun bouncy you know attacking songs uh but it seems like ever since they kind of hooked up with uh danger mouse uh and you know brian burton and really got uh, you know, with his production style, with the stuff that, you know, on Brothers, he was partially a contributor to El Camino, uh, stuff like that. I feel like it's tuned 
their influence away. I, and, and, you know, bands are going to change their sound. This is not a new fact. This is not, you know, this is not a revelation. This is not something out of left field. Bands are going to change their sound, but it's not always going to work in the best way. And I feel like with these new songs, Fever and Turn Blue, the, uh, the title track song, they're very much starting to really, really sound like they're copying and pasting themselves. Turn Blue, I like a little bit better than Fever. Uh, it's got a little bit more of a, a groove, like a bounce to it or something that I just, I like a little bit more. Uh, and, you know, that guitar kind of, because I'm always going to like the Black Keys best from the focal point of their guitars. You know, I'm a big blues fan, blues rock. They've done some great blues rock songs. I'm always going to love that side of them. And, you know, it, it, it's... So I don't like Fever as much, but it's not even so much that it's the blues rock element, it's the fact that they simply just are starting to kind of get in this pattern where I've heard this before, like I've heard, the, the, and, and Fever just seems so strange for a, a lead off single, because whereas with Lonely Boy, you know, it, it's, you know, Lonely Boy isn't this great crazy like modern times song you know of, of theirs you know like a heavy jam like blues song like something that just comes out and kicks your ass and just like it's just that noticeably amazing it's you know but it was it was like a sort of a punchy like blues pop almost like it just it was a good single it was a good thing to lead with fever is just kind of mm, it's just kind of droopy it's just like it it kind of hangs in one place and it's like oh these these lyrics, it's like, I've heard this before. That's just kind of what I kind of take away from that is really, it's not new. It's not really leading me to a place where it's like, wow, these guys are really, you know, they got something new. They got something hot here. You know, this is just not, this just isn't doing it. This is just like, you know, middle gear. And, you know, I don't mean to be the... <laughs> The snobby uppity reviewer who comes up with the great, you know, title headline to a slam of an article. But instead of turn blue, it's really like turn blah. And I mean that in the, you know, I mean that in the most sincere way. It's that same production. It's like, uh, you know, be, it, fever, part of fever, it, you know, if it was a little more electro, electric up, it's not even a word, but if it was more electric up, I swear it would be like a, uh, you know, ready to be like a Broken Bells, like B-side or something. It just doesn't have that fire to it. It doesn't have that ferocity, like uh, like the title track from Thick Freakness did. You know, where it just really zooms up like that. You know, things crank up and then it just rocks it out. Like it just, it jams it out. It's crazy, you know, and it's good. You know, it just really, it really gives you something. And, you know, I don't, it, they're two different styles, but to compare... Uh, the Black Keys, the new songs, to the new Damon Albarn songs, or the songs from the Damon Albarn record that have been out. The great thing that I've really enjoyed about listening to that record, the Damon Albarn record, is that, or the singles from it anyway, are, are that I'm, I'm listening to these songs, and it's like, you know, I'm catching a hook, I, a chorus, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done listening to the song, and I'm thinking, and all of a sudden, I'm humming it, you know, I'm hearing, like, heavy seas of love, like, I'm hearing that chorus in my head, like, it's just like, that's a good chorus, that's like, you know, that's like, that's in my head now, it's like the earworm, it's in there, and it's just like, that is really good, and I really, you know, I want to hear that again, I want to hear more of that, because that just is in my head now, whereas with like fever or something like that, it's just, it's very second gear. It's just very done. It's very has been done. It's been done. And once it's over, it's like, oh, it's over. That's, that's kind of it. That's, you know, I really, I can't get on board with it. And so far, you know, I'll wait to pass my final judgment on it until I hear the full record. And I probably will review it here on the channel because, you know, the Black Keys, were a big thing, you know, for me in 2012 and all that stuff. But so far, I'm really not so far impressed. And disagree or agree as you will, it just doesn't do it for me. So thumbs down for the Black Keys and uh, Turn Blue. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching this little segment on thumbs up and thumbs down. This was just a few thoughts I had on some 
uh, some bands, uh, some bands, some artists who I really had some strong thoughts about, some stuff I wanted to get out there and get up on the, uh, the airwaves of the interwebs before I head off for a little bit. So thank you for listening to my thoughts on Bob Mould, Damon Alburn, uh, The Black Keys. Uh, definitely go out and uh, get a feel for yourself and let me know what you think of that in the comments or just what you think of it in, in general and don't tell me. You just keep it up in your head and, you know, let's all go enjoy the music. But uh, until next time, guys, uh, taking the world by storm in 2014. Thank you for watching my videos and uh, I will meet you back here, well, before too long, I think. Thank you much, very, very much for watching.